going on, everybody? It is May 1st. Exciting times. Uh, Tuesday slate. We've got almost every game. A uh, big 14 gamer today, I believe. So lots to talk about. I don't have any fun uh, May jokes to start this show off like I did yesterday. So, Jake, what's going on? <laughs> Not much. Uh, I did see a bunch of the Justin Timberlake uh, memes that you're talking about, so was pretty pumped about that. <laughs> uh, big 14 game slate. Um, it's 14 on FanDuel too, right? Yeah, it's 14 on both. Okay, so 14 games. We have just an abundance of options up top. Um, should be fun, and there are a few spots I love for bats too. So I'm I'm pretty pumped about this slate. Hoping these top guys eat ownership off each other. Um, and, yeah, we can just sort of play the slate, play the best plays. Yeah, there's there's just an overwhelming amount of pitching tonight at the top end. So getting that right is going to be crucial. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's just dive in because we have a ton to talk about. Let's do it. First game up, uh, Nats and Pirates. Nats, 4.4 run implied total. Pirates, 2.8. Uh, it's a 69% chance to win for the Nats. Nice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Scherzer going for Washington. Chad Cool going for the Pirates. Um, I like Scherzer quite a bit here. Uh, most expensive pitcher on both sides. He's someone that I will have a bit of. Um, he's not my favorite guy. He's probably in the two spot for that. But... I'll have probably more Scherzer than the field, if I had to guess. Um, how are you shaking out on Scherzer right now? I like Scherzer a ton. Um, the run total says it all. Like Vegas says it all here. He's a huge favorite at home going up against a, I'd say, a neutral matchup, a handful of lefties here. So it's a little bit concerning, but I think the strikeouts are going to be here. He's striking out righties or lefties at a 36% rate this year. Um, third in whiffs per swing. Everything looks great for Scherzer. Just another dominant season he's on his way to. Um, I think he pitches really, really well here. And like it's just going to be a matter of, are you going to take him or Chris Sale or Syndergaard or Verlander um, or Kershaw? Yeah. So Scherzer's definitely in the top three for me there i think um it's just going to be a matter of between him sale and uh cinder guard for me actually is where i'm at right now so i love him um i think he pitches awesome here and yeah i don't have much to say about this game besides play scherzer uh, i'm with you there uh, i'll have a decent amount of scherzer I'm not too worried about the lefty bats of the pirates especially with that uh, Pirates 2.8 run implied total is dead last for the entire slate. So if you're looking for some sort of sign on what Vegas thinks, uh, they're not seeing a lot of runs coming out of the Pittsburgh side of this game. What do you think of Nat's bats here? I think Harper looks really nice. I don't know if I would get to a Nat's stack, but I think I can. Yeah, we're on the same page. Like I, I would understand the Nat stack. Cool can lose his cool. If, huh. if you want to go like that, but um, no, like, like I really like Harper. I like Matt Adams. Um, and then like Trey Turner's hitting better and Zimmerman is hitting much better or like actually getting some balls to fall in the gap instead of into fielders gloves. Um, so I, I get the stack, but they're just not my favorite. There are quite a few I think I'd have above them. You said you like Matt Adams? Yeah, I mean... For what he is, he's 3,600 dual position eligibility. He's probably super cheap on FanDuel too, right? Minimum salary. Yeah. <laughs> like he's going to get pitch hit. He, he usually gets pinch hit for. Yeah. Um, like he's one of those like Matt Joyce kind of guys where he'll get you three at bats and a lot of times he'll do something with them against a righty. So yeah, um, no problem playing him when he's super cheap. Yeah, I can get to a stack of like anywhere in that top five because of Adam's price. Um, and then, you know, getting Harper in a lefty-righty matchup. He's only 4,600, too, so you can get to Turner, Kendrick, or, like, Turner, Harper, Kendrick, Adams, or Turner, Harper, Zimmerman, Adams, I think is a, a functionally okay stack on FanDuel. 
yeah, it'll be super low owned, I think, too. Agreed. Uh, so if you're making a bunch of lineups, throw in a Nats stack there. I think they're a pretty solid play tonight. Yeah, and like, I don't mind getting guys like Turner and Harper because I think they're just good in general. And then if Matt Adams is going to be priced at that sort of rate, you've already had three of the four. Might as well add in somebody else. Yeah. I'm with uh, I, don't you. Have, I don't have too much else to say on this game other than just play Scherzer. No, Pirates bats are out of the question for me. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, Marlins and Phillies. Uh, four run implied total for both teams. That's 50 50. Uh, Harlan Garcia going for the Marlins. Uh, Zach Eflin going for the Phillies. Not looking at either of these guys from a pitching perspective. I don't hate either option because of that implied total, but there's just so much good pitching out there that I can't imagine spending all the way down for one of those guys. Yeah, Eflin is pretty bad, if I remember correctly, and and just pulling up his Fangraphs page from some of the things I look at against lefties, 5.43 xFIP, uh, 5.15 Ks per nine, 36% hard contact. 13% 13% K rate, so he's a guy you can definitely stack against. The problem is, this is the Marlins, and there's not that much lefty power. If Justin Is Justin Moore going to play? Do you have him in your probable know, lineup? Yeah. Me too. So if if he plays for 3,200, I like him. Uh, I think that's actually one of the better one-offs that will probably go low-owned. Um, right. And I think he's got a good chance to hit a home run. And then... Maybe Derek Dietrich for 2,800 leading off. But, uh, yeah, Marlins very underwhelming team when you're trying to get hitters in. Yeah, I don't have any real, real interest in the Marlins. They won't be a team that pops up for me. Um, you're going to like a uh, Philly stack, though, aren't you? Yeah, the, the – uh, well, I like Hoskins, Althair, Kingery, and then Carlos Santana's fine as well. I prefer him against righties, but definitely like Hoskins and Althair a ton here. Harlan Garcia, kind of the opposite of Eflin with like some of those numbers I read off. So he's 36 hard, con- 36% hard contact against righties, um, barely getting any soft contact, not striking out righties at a, a big rate. So Hoskins and Althair, I think, have a good chance to take them deep or take him deep, Harlan Garcia. So... Yeah, I'm on the Philly stack a little bit here. Yeah, I won't have them much. I can see the matchup, though, wanting to get Hoskins and out there. I, I do like Santana as well. Um, they're not not going to be a big stack for me because of that four-run implied total, but I'll have them in a line or two. Yeah, that's fair. There's just, not too, there's just too many games today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Mets and Braves. Mets, 4.3 run implied total. Braves, 3.2. 64% chance to win for the Mets. Uh, it's Noah, Noah Syndergaard going for New York. Sean Newcomb going for the Braves. Uh, not touching Newcomb, but I do like Syndergaard quite a bit, particularly on DraftKings, where I think that he would end up being my first starting pitcher. Um, I like his combination of price and upside. Not really worried about the Braves, but I complain about the Braves basically every show. Um, yeah, Syndergaard's are going to be a guy that I would have. I, I love Noah Syndergaard tonight, and I loved him before I really even saw the price. In 10-8, you get a $1,600 discount from Sale, yeah. a $1,900 discount from Scherzer. So, like, point per dollar, I think Syndergaard could easily match them in raw points, and he should come close to them. Yeah. Unless Chris Sale has one of his 50-point games where he, he goes – nine innings with 14 strikeouts or something. Uh, outside of something crazy happening, I love Syndergaard. Um, I think he's got a good chance to lead the, the slate in points. So for that discount, um, he'll he'll be in the spotlight pitchers for sure. Uh, I love him. I just hope he's not too highly owned. Yeah, uh, I think he'll see a little bit of ownership. There's just too many guys for anybody to really go too high here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like Syndergaard quite a bit. One of my one of my main three with Scherzer and um, cheap pitcher to come that everyone looking at the screen can obviously tell is Michael Walker. 
Waka, yeah. Uh, hitter wise, I definitely don't want any Braves. Um, I'm inclined to like Wilmer Flores a little bit on FanDuel. He's only 2200 so getting that righty-lefty matchup at that kind of a bargain price, he's going to pop up a lot in one-off scenarios for me. Um, but I don't see this game as terribly stackable. It's better on DK than it is on FanDuel, but I doubt that I would have a ton of it here. Yeah, Newcomb's a guy I respect enough to <clears throat> not want to stack against him on a huge slate like this. He can miss bats. Uh, he's done a good job at limiting hard contact against righties. Uh, decent fly ball rates. Um, so I'm not going out of my way to, to stack against Newcomb. I guess as Drupal Cabrera and Todd Frazier are the two Mets bats that I love, or like, I should say. I, I don't love them. Uh, and then Flores is 3K on, on drafting, so he'll get some ownership there. But I'm not the biggest Flores versus a lefty truther. Uh, <laughs> okay. As of now. but No, I hear you. Uh, he could definitely change my mind as the season goes on. Yeah, uh, this is just another one where like there's not a ton of offense. A lot of the offense is coming in the later games. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'll, you can get pitching out of the early games, but yeah, Syndergaard for me, and that's basically it. Flores is a one-off on FanDuel, <clears throat> 2,200 dollar price point is is just kind of crazy. Yeah, um, actually, let me back off that that Flores uh, take for a second. Uh, he's been actually pretty good against lefties uh, going back to last year. So so you are a uh, Flores truther now? I don't know if I'm a Flores truther, but I always thought he was just like super, super overrated against lefties. But um, I don't know. I mean, he seems like he's been okay. So And he doesn't strike out against them, which I like. 500 slugging percentage in his career versus lefties. 234 ISO. Yeah, that's pretty good. pretty good. Yeah. Especially yeah. So twenty two hundred. <clears throat> yeah. I'll take that. I'll take my chance. Maybe there. it's just the only thing. He just crushes me because I, I don't play him that much, so I, I get mad at him. But I, I understand um, that. Been down that road with quite a few guys before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Reds and Brewers. Now we got something to talk about. Reds four point four run implied total. Brewers four point nine. It's a fifty five percent chance to win <clears> for the Brewers. Homer Bailey going for Cincinnati. Chase Anderson going for Milwaukee. Uh, I don't want any part of the pitching. I'm all about the hitters here. Um, you're, I'd, I'm guessing you're not looking at Chase Anderson at all? No. No no pitching for me here. Okay. Um, and then I do like both sides. So this will be another popular game stack. Yep. This game didn't go off yesterday, but I think it ended up like 6-5. Yeah, Brewers so, at 6, I think. Yeah, so if you stacked it, you probably did okay. Um, so I like the top five or top six, even with Manny Pena for twenty five hundred for the Brewers. Uh, with uh, Lorenzo Cain is probably my favorite bat out of that game. Um, I don't know. I mean, I like all the Brewers' prices. They're all in spots where I'm willing to pay those prices on DK. Um, <clears throat> Nothing bad to say. This, this Brewers lineup again is off from the overnight. Oh, okay. So, do you have? I had Bandy have... in instead of Pena, so I'm adding Pena okay. right now. But I loved them before that. I'm gonna like them even more here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I think I actually I saw Bandy in it yesterday when I was looking at this. So, what's really funny, like yesterday, I had that old lineup. You mentioned the changes to the Brewers lineup, and then when it came mm -hmm. in, it was back to like the Domingo Santana version that I originally had. I was like, "Damn, I could have just I, waited this one out." Yeah. How do you not play Jesus Aguilar against a lefty? I don't know. With Eric, Th no Eric Thames. Yeah, I don't get it. So yeah, uh, uh, Brewers lineup. I'll have everybody from one to eight in some form or fashion. Uh, like I think. Orlando Arcia looks good at 2300 for a shortstop as part of a stack. Uh, I don't have any problems there. I don't have any problems getting VR at 2700 as a second baseman as part of a stack. And then Yelich made spotlight hitters. Uh, Ryan Braun could have easily made spotlight hitters. Um, there's just like I just want those guys in in mass. Lorenzo Kane with the homer last night. Spags called it on the live stream. <laughs> 
Did he really? Yeah. <laughs> he picked Kane. I picked uh, Bias. Bias went over four with two Ks. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, he called it. Yeah, yeah so Yelich. Yeah, Yelich is still crushing everything. Um, so I, I can't quit Yelich. No. Uh, Especially against Shaw. Hunter Bailey. Yeah, and Bailey's been getting crushed by righty, so that's why I like the entire stack. It's not he hasn't been some world beater against left-handed bats, but um, yeah, I took a look at uh, Bailey's splits over his career, <clears throat> and he's like relatively neutral um, <clears throat> righty to lefty, just like for for everything. Everything was kind of the same. I was really surprised. I figured figured he had like pronounced splits, but it doesn't seem like he does. So yeah, tons of Brewers can't get enough. I just basically yeah. leave those in the spotlight <clears throat> stacks from now on. But I like the Reds, too. Yeah. Um, for me, for the Reds, I think it's Votto, um, Duvall, and Suarez. And then Scott Shebler, if he's in the lineup. I'm, I'm not seeing him in there, so maybe I missed something on Shebler. <clears throat> um, but race or uh, Red Stack, definitely up there. Again, this game, probably one of the better chances to get you seven runs from each side, if I had to choose a game. Yeah. Uh, so I like it as a game stack. If you want to just stack up one side of it, uh, be my guest. Yeah, I'll have uh, I'll have a decent amount of Reds, and the Brewers will probably be my most popular stack if I had to guess. That could change with little tweaks to the lineup, but Yelich is going to be a guy I have a ton of. You can't get a much better matchup than what he's got today. Yeah, totally agree. All righty, anything else? I think we covered it. Okay. Tigers and Rays. <clears throat> Tigers, four-run implied total. Rays, 4.5. It's a 56% chance to win for the Rays. Uh, Matt Boyd going for Detroit. Chris Archer going for the Rays. Uh, normally, I like Archer a lot. Um, today, he's just sort of in this middle ground of price where there's too many guys that are above him that are better, and there are too many guys below him that are significantly cheaper uh, efficient options so I, I think his ownership is going to be pretty low um, he's not a guy that I'm really looking at a lot is he are you taking a look at him at all not really it's sort of awkward pricing on DK yeah so he's he's sixteen hundred dollars cheaper than Cindergard and I much much prefer Cindergard um, I don't know I mean this Tigers lineup isn't great but they have some guys in there that that don't really strike out that often. Jonas Martin, Candelario isn't striking out. Miguel Cabrera, Castellanos is under 20%. Victor Martinez is under 10% against righties this year. Um, Dixon Machado even. So I don't love the strikeout upside for Chris Archer. And when I don't love the strikeout upside for him and guys are going to make contact, then I'm usually not looking to target him, especially not at this price. Yeah, I, I just he's really hard to get to today. Mm -hmm. um, any thoughts on Ray's bats? <clears throat> Every day I feel like I kind of like them, and I don't know why. Yeah, they've had a couple nights lately where they've broken the slate, so they're hitting pretty hot. Um, CJ Cron and Daniel Robertson are both over 50% hard contact against lefties this year, which I was astounded to, to see. Um, it's, it's a short sample, but... Man, those two, if you're if you're getting a hard hit every other time you're putting the ball in play, like you can definitely find your way on my team. So uh, those two and Wilson Ramos I have interest in against Matt Boyd. I'm with you there. I just had to delete other Daniel Robertson from the player pool so it stopped pulling in that wrong salary. I should probably oh. fix that today. Um, yeah, like I can get there with Crone and Gomes and... I don't know. I just, like, they always look like I should play them, but they're always just so cheap, and I don't play them because I don't trust the Rays, and they have a bunch of guys that I don't think are any good, but somehow keep scoring runs. I don't really know how to, like, I don't really know what to make of it right now. I don't yeah, think they're good, I, but yet they keep doing good stuff. I agree there. So, like, with one lineup, it's going to be hard for me to play a handful of Rays, but... Um... I'd, I'd have like sprinkles of them if I was making a bunch of lineups. This is a game I just I really won't be on all that much. 
that's completely fair. I, I don't blame you at all if you cross this one off. Next one I'll be on quite a bit. Uh, Red Sox and Royals. Red Sox, five run implied total. Royals, three. It's a 72% chance to win for the Red Sox. Chris Sale going for Boston. Jacob Junis going for Kansas City. Uh, no way am I touching Junis. Oddly enough, he's one of the more expensive non-elite guys on FanDuel. Not happening. Uh, I'll have a bunch of Chris Sale. He's probably my favorite of the top tier. Um, I just I have no respect for the Royals. Three run implied total helps me out in that direction. Um, I'm going to have a bunch of sale. I'll be happy with it. And I'll want some Red Sox bats to go with it, although they are not cheap. Yeah, sale's an awesome play. Um, he's $300 cheaper than Scherzer, if that matters to you, um, on DK. like I think he's got a great chance for the win as being a minus 290 favorite. Yeah. Uh, I think his team puts up a bunch of runs here on Junis, so that's just an extra bump to Sale. Um, like, there's nothing bad I can say about Sale. He's a great play if you can afford him. Um, I think I prefer Cindergard point per dollar, okay. but it's close. Like, I, if you've got the extra sixteen hundred bucks on DK, then go right ahead. I'm I'm not going to blame anyone for playing Sale over Noah Cindergard. I think it's just. Um, I'd rather pay up for a couple more bats on the slate. I hear you. I'd, I'd rather pay up for some of the Red Sox bats. Five run implied total yeah. is really nice. One of four teams over five. Um, you know they're they're pricey, but they're also some of the best bats in in the league. Whether that's Betts, Hanley, JD, Bogarts, you know Ben Um I like anything basically in the top six here. Me too. No, no problem with a Red Sox stack. They've been killing righties. Um, is Mookie Bats expected to be back in the lineup? I have him in. Um, let me check it out. So if, if he's in the lineup, then it's just another bump. To awesome Red Sox order. Um, so Bats and JD Martinez probably my two favorite bats here, but you can certainly get in Benintendi and Devers if you're paying down at one of the pitcher spots. So there are a ton of big bats to pay up for today. That's why I'm preferring Noah Syndergaard a little bit. Cora said that he was actually an option yesterday if they needed to bring him in. So okay, uh, I'm guessing he's probably in the lineup today. Oh, good. So he should be relatively healthy. Yeah. Um, There's yeah. Nothing wrong with a Red Sox stack, but everybody no. should know that. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, they're not one of my spotlight stacks, but that could change if anything moves a little bit here. They are uh, on the precipice, that's for sure. For sure. Play Chris yeah. Hale. Is that easy? Yeah. Yeah, do that if you can. And I, I'm sure there's ways to, to stack uh, or to get two of the top studs in and stack a full team oh, yeah. on DK. I'm just going to try to figure out what that is probably after the show or while we're loading up the uh, the fantasy cruncher sure. uh, so there's ways to do it like you don't have to pay it on at one pitcher spot if you don't want to yeah i think there'll be definite uh like sales in the guard options yeah all righty cubs and rockies cubs 4.4 run implied total rockies 3.6 it's a 59 percent chance to win for the cubs actually i should double check that to see if this line has moved at all like it did yesterday that could be my trigger this could be another Wrigley win game. Yeah, from what I was looking at last night. Uh, still not out yet, so I'll keep an I'll keep that tab open for the end of the show if it happens again. And one thing to note: uh, there aren't really any weather concerns tonight. Only one that could be would be uh, Blue Jays Twins. They could have some late rain, um, but it shouldn't affect any starting pitchers. It's looking good out here right now, so <laughs> we should we should be good. Uh, I don't know what I've said so far. So 59% chance to win for the Cubs. Kyle Kendrick. Or yeah, Kyle Kendrick. Kyle Hendricks going for Chicago. John Gray going for the Rockies. Hey, at least Kyle Kendrick is a pitcher. Um, not a spot where I'm really looking all that closely at pitching, but I think that Hendricks is worth a look on FanDuel 
at uh, 7300 There just happens to be a guy slightly cheaper that I think is way better of an option. But I don't mind Hendricks here. Yeah, I mean, um, if it's a Wrigley win game, I'm just going to disregard the pitchers. Uh, right now I'm seeing 16 miles an hour out to left center. So kind of like yesterday, yeah. um, we've seen pitchers like pitch well in those conditions. It's like when pitchers pitch well in Coors. It, it happens sometimes. Um, it's just more likely to not happen when there's 15 mile an hour winds blowing out. So um, with Gray, I'm not really looking to target righties against him, and the Cubs have a bunch to start off their lineup. Yeah. But I do like Rizzo and Schwarber. And then with Hendricks, he's a guy that I don't like targeting with bats um, if I can avoid it. But Charlie Blackman leading off, um, probably going to get five at bats here. Uh, 5,100. Um, that would be the guy that I like for Colorado. But there's actually not a ton of bats I like, even if it is a Wrigley win game. Yeah, the total's pretty low right now, in my opinion. Um, it's probably going to jump up, so maybe I can safely. Uh, give that a little bit of a boost right now. We can take a look at it. But right now, I don't see much in this game that I'm interested in. Hendrick is also uh, more expensive on DK by 700 compared to Gray. Gray is actually more expensive on FanDuel by 100 bucks. So uh, it's a little bit of a flip flop there. Yeah. Let's bump that up to nine. I feel comfortable there. Yeah, I mean, I could get to a Cubs stack. I don't think that I have a ton of interest in it. I don't expect the Cubs or the Rockies to be particularly uh, interesting from a stack perspective here, unless that total gets above 10. Um, yeah. It's just, this is more, uh, if it gets above 10, then the bats are definitely more in play. As of right now, it's kind of just in a middle ground for me. I'll have a little bit of it, but nothing special. There are just other stacks I prefer. Me too. Astros and Yankees. Astros 4.5 run implied total. Yankees 3.5. 61% chance to win for the Astros. It's Justin Verlander going for Houston. Jordan Montgomery going for New York. Um, we're not obviously looking at Montgomery. For Verlander, he's like, I don't know, probably my least favorite of the five guys at the top. I don't like the matchup against the Yankees. I don't really like... I just think everybody else has a better or is in a better spot. Yankees three and a half run implied total, quite a bit higher than the rest of the studs matchups. So for me, Verlander is going to be the guy that gets pinched the most here. Um, I assume his ownership will also be relatively low, so it could be interesting, but I, I just don't need him. Yeah, there are strikeouts in this Yankee lineup, and Verlander's been good this year, striking guys out um, as always. Like. If you want to just get contrarian or you want to get some exposure to Verlander, I, I agree with you. I think he's going to be, out of those top five, probably the lowest owned. Um, maybe Kershaw even might be the lowest owned out of those guys. But um, like we just saw a really good strikeout pitcher in Charlie Morton pitch very well um, and strike out 10 against the Yankees last night. So I'm not saying Verlander has the same kind of stuff, but... He could have a big performance here. I, I wouldn't be shocked at all. And the thing about Verlander is that he oftentimes goes 110 pitches, 115 pitches when he's pitching well. Yeah. So that's just sort of an extra bump. And that's probably why he's priced above Noah Syndergaard. So, yeah. Look, I mean, I, I like him, but. I like any of these guys because I think they have okay ish matchups. It's just like. 2.8 run implied total, 3, 2.9, mm -hmm. 3.2. I mean, that's that's so, so low that it's hard to fade these teams where I don't think uh, they, they're, the opposing offense is going to do all that much. Yeah, I'm, I agree. Like, And that's certainly a, a tiebreaker that I would look at because it's really close up top. I don't think that there's like a far and away best play. I would agree with you there. It's very marginal. Uh, from a bat perspective... You know, I'm in for the top four of the Astros. Probably anything in the top six, really. But I don't really love Reddick's price. I'd be happy to have Bregman plus the top four. Um, just get a bunch of righties against Montgomery. Nothing crazy. I don't 
it's <clears throat> not the best pricing in the world, but you know they have some pretty major upside. Yeah, it's just I like I think Montgomery is a pretty good pitcher. The pricing isn't great on DK outside of Guriel. Um <clears throat> and then that Yankees bullpen just comes in and they just seem to strike out everyone. It's like 33.3% K rate. Um, yeah, probably a little nice. different now, but because uh, I was refreshed yesterday. So they're at 33%. Um, so it's it's just tough to recommend a stack. You want a bad pitcher on the mound and a bad bullpen to follow, and I don't think there's really either one of those for Houston, despite the decent run total. I'm with you there. This one's easy today. Maybe maybe we're just going to do really well. I hope so. hope we're not forgetting anything. Yeah, we'll find out. <clears throat> uh, twins and Blue Jays. Twins, 5.2 run implied total. Blue Jays, 4.6. 56% chance to win for the Twins. Kyle Gibson going for Minnesota. Marco Estrada going for Toronto. I'm not looking at any of the pitchers here. I just desperately want a ton of Twins bats. But you're going to talk to me about Kyle Gibson. Yeah, Gibson, uh, he's a guy that's coming up pretty strong for me today. Um, I like the run total for the Twins. I think they get to Marco Estrada, or at least they, they should most of the time here. Um, Gibson is 13th in whiffs per swing on the season. Uh, almost 30% K rate against righties. I don't think he's a 30% K rate pitcher against either hand, because um, most aren't. But uh, there are definitely some strikeouts in this Toronto lineup. Um, so, like Teoscar Hernandez, when he's not hitting home runs, he's going to strike out a bunch. Um, I can't believe you you're can... speaking so poorly about your guy. I know. No, and that's sarcastic because I never play him, and I didn't think he was any good, and then he would just hit a home run every single day, and everybody would be going nuts on Twitter. <laughs> um, so I just felt left out. So I'm just – I'm salty, but – uh, like Smoke, you can strike out Smoke, you can strike out Morales, you can strike out Russell Martin. These guys are all above 20% this year against righties. Um, I don't know. I mean, I can't believe I'm recommending Kyle Gibson, but... Such a homer. I, I don't even like the Twins. I'm, I'm, the twins. I, like, I'm a Cubs fan, and <laughs> um, Gibson... I, I hate Gibson, but... Uh, <laughs> I guess, I guess I don't hate him because I like the numbers. So um, certainly could end up playing him even with just one lineup tonight. Okay. Uh, I assume you're with me on Twins bats. Um, they made spotlight stacks. Eddie Rosario looked like a great option. Made a spotlight hitter lineup for me. Uh, I want everything basically one to seven. <clears throat> um, if you want to start Jason Castro at catcher on DK, I don't have a problem with that. Uh I just I want a bunch of twins here. 5.2 run implied total is neck and neck with the Cardinals for the top spot. I'm just I'm in for all of it. Yeah, I mean I like it quite a bit as well. The pricing is really nice on DK especially. So yeah. you start off with Dozier at 4400, and Estrada's been getting crushed by righties. So he's got a 91.8 mile an hour average exit velocity. In a pretty decent sample this year against righties, that's that puts him near the top 20 for starting pitchers. Um, it's really nice weather here in Minneapolis. Um, yeah, for so now. I like Dozier. Yeah, for now. Maybe it'll get worse as the day goes on. But I like Dozier. And then Logan Morrison's been hitting righties really hard. Max Kepler seems like he's a better hitter this year. Um, and then I like Rosario as well. So... Uh, even Joe Maurer, like he's probably not going to hit a home run, but he gets you a couple doubles here, I think, against off Marco Estrada. So I like the twin stack a little bit. I'm higher on them than I was last night on the night shift. So if you're listening to that, um, I've changed my tune a little bit <laughs> on the twins. So Yeah, I'll, twins will be one of my top three stacks of the day. Yeah, uh, they're, they're probably in the top five for me. And I'll have a little bit of, solo Curtis Granderson action too if he's leading off just a nice price right now on FanDuel 3200 um, I don't really have any other part of the Blue Jays so yeah I mean if you want to take the hitters against Kyle Gibson I, I don't think that's the worst idea but he seems like he he's doing something right I don't I gotta see which pitches are getting all these whiffs 
It looks like his slider against righties has been pretty good. Um, his changeup against, oh no, his slider against lefties too has been good. Um, curveball against lefties. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Kyle Gibson, but I might jump on him here. 6,500. We'll see tomorrow morning how that yeah. shakes out. Yeah. Could end poorly. Uh, Cardinals and White Sox. Cardinals 5.2 run implied total. White Sox 3.5. 68% chance to win for the Cardinals. Michael Waka going for St. Louis. James Shields going for Chicago. Uh, Waka is my favorite pitcher of the day from like a value perspective, particularly on FanDuel, uh, where he's priced only at 7000 uh, so many people ahead of him that should not be ahead of him. Um, I'm going to end up with an overwhelming amount of Michael Walker. I will certainly be significantly higher than the field on him. 68% uh, chance to pick up the win here is, is just monstrous. And I have no real issues with the White Sox from the left side of the plate. So uh, Waka should cruise, or at least I hope that he does. I think Waka's got a good chance to pick up a win. I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, I like him better on FanDuel. Yeah. On DK, I don't know that I'm going to get up to him just because he doesn't have the, the K upside. Like, the win is more important on FanDuel. Um, I mean, you like the win on DK too, but um, it's not the, the end-all, be-all. So I get the Waka play. I don't think I'm on him on DK. I'd rather just go down and take my chances with, with Kyle Gibson. Yeah. But... Um, how about the Cardinals bats? You got to be all over them, right? Love them. Yeah. Carpenter made uh, spotlight hitters. Uh, 3,100 on FanDuel, 3,600 on DK. Leading off, James Shields is just an utter train wreck. Doesn't matter which hand you hit with. So uh, I'm in for Carpenter. I'm in basically the whole way down. Uh, I don't have a problem going with Colton Wong, even if he's hitting eighth, uh, if you need a second baseman as part of your stack. Um, that might be tough to do since Carpenter is also uh, second base eligible, but you can grab basically anything here, especially in the top four or top five on DK since you need a catcher. But uh, Carpenter, Pham, Martinez, and Ozuna, uh, I, I absolutely love. It wouldn't shock me to see Dexter Fowler hitting at the top of the order when this lineup actually comes out. Um, but I'm in. I just, I just want a bunch of these guys. Yeah, and you, I mean, you pointed it out, like, there are a lot of righties in this lineup for the Cardinals, or at least this projected lineup, but Shields does not discriminate um, <laughs> against either hand. Like, 39% hard contact against righties, 11% K rate, 150 whip. Um, I'm going to see how good he is or bad he is at, at holding on runners. I don't think he's great. Yeah, he's not great. Um <laughs> So Tommy Pham, that's why he's probably priced up at 4900 but that's a pretty fair price considering the hitting and stolen base matchup. Uh, Jose Martinez just priced way too low, even against a righty. 3600 is a pretty ridiculous price. Ozuna is underpriced. Uh, Dexter Fowler is underpriced. Paul DeJong is overpriced, but he's going to be super low owned. He's got big power even against righties um carpenter leading off if that's gonna be how they play it you said that fowler may lead off uh i wouldn't it wouldn't shock me if he was higher in the order today okay yeah me either i mean i have no sixth but they mess around with matt carpenter it seems like every year um but wherever he's hitting i think both of them make sense uh like i just wish that the Cardinals were priced up a little bit more on DK and make people choose between the stud pitchers and this kind of stack with a huge run total. Um, but I think they'll be chalky. I think they deserve the being the chalk stack. Um, what about any White Sox guys? Uh, no. You're, well, you're playing Waka, so um, I just like Mankata against a righty. He's just been insane. Like he's top five or six in average exit velocity against right-handed pitching this year, and or he's number four actually up there um, near Aaron Judge. So that that seems like it's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, oh, that's in the last two weeks, but you get the so, point. He's he's been crushing. So. Yeah, White Sox guys aren't going to be guys that I end up with uh, just because of my love of Waka and love of all things Cardinals tonight. So, 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, get I'm it. Ch- very much cheering against the White Sox. Yeah, and there could be some wind, like even blowing out to left here. So I'm just visualizing these righties, like Jose Martinez, just pulling everything into the seats. Uh, and J- James Shields, I think it's going to be a short outing for him. I hope so. Yeah. I hope it's a long one for Waka. <laughs> Diamondbacks and Dodgers. Uh, D-backs, 2.9 run implied total. Dodgers, 4.3. It's a 66% chance to win for the Dodgers. Would you say Coke or Cock? Uh, it's, I have a friend that spells his name the exact way, and it's Cook. Okay, so I I had people in my high school, and it's Cuck. So, really? Yeah. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, this Matt <laughs> gentleman going for the Diamondbacks... Uh, pronunciation to be determined doesn't matter because you're not playing him he's uh not relevant in this discussion clayton kershaw going for the dodgers and uh it should we should take a second to pour one out for Corey seager's shoulder or whatever that needed the tommy john surgery uh, so sorry Corey seager we'll see you next year Sucks yeah for the dodgers man that's too bad uh yeah. i saw that yesterday and it's tommy john surgery yeah and i was and that's your elbow right so is um, it its elbow or did, whatever? I don't know. Anyways, he can't play. Like yeah. He's definitely whatever. not so going to be. Playing. I was like, why? I didn't even know like non-pitchers got that injury. So uh, whatever. Yeah, you but... see like one or two hitters a year that end up getting it. Um, yeah. They're not always Corey Seager, so you don't think about it as much. It sucks, yeah. man. Um, so Kershaw, uh, not a guy that I'm targeting. I, I never thought that there would be a day especially when he's still obviously really good, where Kershaw would be a starter and he, he would be a guy that I'm not really looking at, yet here we are. Um, I just like the other guys more than Kershaw. Uh, I, I won't have much of him at all. I'm, I could look very stupid when all is said and done because Clayton Kershaw is Clayton Kershaw. But I'll end up having more Scherzer, more Sale, and more Waka, and that's all really that matters. And Syndergaard. Yeah, me too. Like, um, I don't think we're seeing the same that we've seen the last maybe five or six years where it's literally every time he goes out, you're expecting him to throw seven innings, uh, eight, ten K, something like that. Um, like, I think he still has those vintage performances in him. And we've seen it a couple times this year where he's been really awesome and probably the top scoring pitch- pitcher on the slate. Um, and I'm sure he'll do that at some point a few times the rest of the year, but I don't think really this is one of those nights. I think you're going to need the top raw scoring pitcher, um, or at least one of them tonight, and I don't think he's got huge upside in this matchup. Against Arizona, it's a decent hitting park, whatever you want to say about the Humidor. He's the least favored, I think, out of the, those top five, right? Uh, uh, oh, maybe Verlander is. They're all pretty much in the same okay. sort of pack. Well, Verlander... Verlander's minus 170, I'm seeing. Yeah. And then Kershaw, minus 190. Is that is that what you have? Um, I might have an error in here right now. Okay. Well, either way, I mean... No, I don't. Yeah, uh, Verlander's minus 165. So I've got the Astros at 62%. Um, Kershaw's at 66 so it's yeah. Verlander's lowest, Kershaw's second. They're all 60-plus. Yeah, I mean, like, Goldschmidt scares me. Um, Pollock is a, is whatever. Chris Owings, not a guy I'm super scared of. So if you just want to play a low-owned Kershaw because you're not going to get low-owned Kershaw many times, this would be the spot to do it. Um, I just don't think he's, he's going to end up on my team, so I can't say he's, like, some phenomenal play tonight. Diamondbacks versus lefties this year. Sixth in baseball and hard contact percentage. Yeah. Um, those are the kind of tiebreakers I'd be looking at for some of these top guys. Exactly. Just, if that was 29th, I'd be like, huh, maybe I should have a little bit more Kershaw. When I yeah. saw that it was sixth, it was like, huh, maybe I should keep not having Kershaw. Mm-hmm. It, it's really that easy. Like I didn't. I would have taken any sort of reason to go any direction there. And uh you know, if they're giving up hard, or if Diamondbacks are hitting uh, lefties pretty hard right now, I've got other options. Yeah. Dodgers bats, though. Um, 
I'm more than okay going there. They're crazy cheap on FanDuel right now. Uh, I'll go one to six. You're not getting like the best guys in the world, but like Cody Bellinger's only 3,900. I like it. Grandal, 3,400 on FanDuel. I like it. I'm fine with Kemp. I'm fine with Alex Verdugo. I'm fine with Utley. Like, I can get to a Dodger stack and be more than okay with it. They're just cheap. Yeah, I understand the Dodger stack. I think I'm more just on Grandal and Cody Bellinger as a sort of one off or mini stack. Utley's pretty cheap on DK if he's going to be batting near the top of the order. Uh, 3,400, but. He's like 57 years old, so <laughs> I get it if you don't want to play Chase Utley. Um, but yeah, Grandall and Ballinger, I think, are both pretty solid plays here against Matt Cook. <laughs> Is there a pronunciation? I won't, I won't be able to figure it out anyway. I think they have that kind of stuff on Baseball Reference. They have it on YouTube. You can just search any name or any word. Do they have the pronunciation on here? Oh, it's Cook. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Matt Cook. I'm not going to roster you. You're probably going to get bombed tonight. Sorry, brother. Yep. But we figured it out regardless. Yeah, that, <laughs> it was Cook to me in, uh, growing up in high school. They ran a turkey farm. Interesting. Yeah. That's where we got our turkey for like holidays and stuff. The more you know, people. There's insight into my holiday life as a child. Are we good on D-backs, Dodgers? Um, yes, we are. Okay. Angels and Orioles. Angels, five-run implied total. Orioles, 3.8. 62% chance to win for the Angels. Nick Trapiano going for the Angels. Alex Cobb going for the Orioles. Um, I like Trapiano here a little bit. I think he's a really nice value. I think that he'd be a very interesting starting pitcher, too, if you needed to pay down and go real heavy on bats. Um, I probably wouldn't go below Waka outside of maybe one lineup for Trapiano. There's just too much above him to like. Uh, but if I needed to play two pitchers, I would probably have a little bit more Trapiano than less. Um, have you looked at him at all? Yeah, I, I think he's a pretty decent option here. So on DK, he's 6,400, just right next to my boy Kyle Gibson. Um so if I don't end up on Gibson, if I if I chicken out, then Tropiano would be another spend out option that I'm interested in. Um, prefer him over like the guys we'll talk about soon, Triggs and Felix Hernandez. Um, and then he's he's right up there with Gibson for me. I like targeting against Baltimore. Very very impatient team have been all year. Uh, and then I think Tropiano gets a ton of run support here. So actually, my my favorite thing in this game, it's not some hot take, but uh, Angels one of my top two favorite stacks right now. Okay. Uh, like Cobb three percent K rate against lefties this year, thirty seven point five percent hard contact. He's had two games out of three starts where he struck out zero guys. Uh, like they're going to be putting the ball in play, and these are good good hitters: Kinsler, Trout, Upton. Otani, if he's in the lineup for 4,500. Angelton Simmons, he's 3,900, going to be probably low-owned, but I just have no respect for Cobb. I love um, how much you hate Albert Pujols. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't even think he's a bad player. cleanup play. hitter of the, Angel, yeah. of the stack you like the most. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't think he's some great hitter anymore, but he's 3,600 too. Like, the problem with Pujols... Um, is there's a guy that's his exact same price that I much prefer. So that's Jose Martinez. Okay. And you can't play them both. So that's probably why I'm, I skipped over Pujols. Um, there's, <laughs> I love like, it. Some, some days I will not play Pujols. Uh, he just hits those uh, line drives off the wall, and he ends up with a single. Like, he's not, seems he's like not every really time. fleet of foot any longer. No, and he doesn't even try either if you watch him. I don't like, he's. Him. He's just milking it down first base. He's he's fine with a single, 400-foot single. When you're worth $100-plus million, dollars, uh, yeah, I'd probably not give as many shits as I used to as yeah. well once I got old. And he might be like 65. We we still don't know how old he is. Yeah, there there's a conspiracy around that. 
the the Miguel Tejada thing. Yeah, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter now. I mean, he's like an inner circle Hall of Famer, and he's still playing and playing, he's hitting cleanup. Yeah. But uh, there was that stretch where he was in the peak of it all, like, oh, should we give him this deal? He might be 40 right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I gave the similar stat on the last one as the tiebreaker. This might be the tiebreaker in the other direction. Orioles, hard contact rate versus righties this year. Dead last. Yeah, they are, the Orioles are kind of garbage, and Makes just, like Tropiano just for even DFS, more. yeah, yeah, they could have a over five hundred record. I have no way of knowing. I don't pay attention to that, but Angels they're a really Orioles? good Orioles. Orioles. Are eight and twenty. Okay, yeah, so they're even awful in real life baseball too. Yeah. Um, I love targeting against them. With I'm pitchers. starting to talk myself into like having a little bit more Tropiano than I should. 27% hard contact versus righties. Dead last in the league. Behind the think, Marlins. Yeah, do you think he's going to be chalky, Tropiano? Like, do you think he'll be, like, a trendy pay-down option? Because if he is, then I much, much prefer Kyle Gibson and just take the the ownership and hope he outscores him. I can't imagine he would be. Um, unless unless we've got way more sway than we think we do. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay, so, like... We're talking about it on DK, obviously. He, he will yeah. be barely owned on FanDuel because there's just too much between right. one pitcher and all the stuff at the top. Like, Tropiano will be 3 or 4% at best. What, yeah. what What's your guess for his ownership on DK? Oh, man, it's it's so early. I, I mean, I usually read around and see, just, like, get the temperature of the industry um, later in the day, but... Um, I, I mean, don't follow DK ownership percentages all that much, so I'm, I'm like 10, 15 okay. percent. Okay. I, I mean, I don't. I mean, that might be a little bit high. I because I don't know if you can if there's going to be like a trendy stack where you can fit in two of the top studs. If um, you were ten percent, I would want to have more than that. Oh yeah, I, I'd agree with that for sure. I but I think Gibson's. Be, I would like, want to be heavier than the than the field on Trapiano, if I could. Yeah. Anything below twenty, I think. That's fair. Like if he's ten, I, mean, I would want fifteen to twenty. Yeah, I get that. I think he'd be an interesting way to chip. We'll see uh, when we crunch this out. Like if he, I know that he's there, but um, we'll see how much you can pay up for. Because if you can get up to, like, if you can run out Sale and Syndergaard and still get two quality stacks, then the interest in Trapiano goes down because you don't need him as much. Right. Um, I guess I didn't really touch on the Angels' bats. I'm not as interested in them as you are. Um, I'm fine going Kinsler, Trout, Upton, and I'll actually include Pujols. Uh, I'll be respectful of the future Hall of Famer. Um and then I, I'm good with Otani or Simmons. I just think there are more efficient stacks out there. Um, but I'll never have a problem having Trout in anything. So, Pujols right. home run tonight. I mean, I could certainly see it. It might be a grand slam when Alex Cobb uh, lets up three 115-mile-an-hour singles in a row. <laughs> this, I mean, uh, Cobb is awful yeah. Like from everything I'm looking at. So... Like, give me all the Angels. I'll for sure end up with some Angels in my lineup. It's just a matter of whether it's going to be three, four, or five. Like, I think they're probably my top stack as of now. Okay. Uh, yeah, love love the Angels. We'll see how they pop up uh, when we look at the crunch. Uh, Mariners and A's. Mariners, 4.2 run implied total. A's, 4.1. 51% chance to win for the Mariners. Felix Hernandez going for Seattle. Andrew Triggs going for Oakland. Um, Triggs is $1,700 more expensive than Felix Hernandez on FanDuel. Hernandez $600 more expensive than him on DK. Um, I don't want Triggs at all on FanDuel. He's slightly more playable on DK. You could talk me into Felix on FanDuel, but there's no reason to pay down that far on this big of a slate. So for me, this pitching is a no-go. Yeah, I'm really not on either side. Um, like, I, I'd much rather have Gibson and Tropiano <clears throat> ahead of any of these guys on DK. <clears throat> and then the prices you mentioned on FanDuel, like, 
no interest there. Um, when you have to nail pitcher with your one pitcher that you get. Yeah. So, um, who, do you like bats in this game? I I don't Just really. Just Joyce. Yeah, Joyce and uh, got to mention Jed Lowry and then Matt Olson. Yeah. But they're batting one three five or they're projected to bat one three five. So I won't have any stacks here. Yeah. That's sort of where I'm at. It's just I'm hoping this one stays pretty quiet. Um, like, I don't think either pitcher really gets blown up. No, there's not any ownership in this game at all. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> we good on this one? <laughs> I think we're good. Last game: Giants and Padres. Giants four point two run implied total. Padres three point eight. 55% chance to win for the Giants. Andrew Suarez going for San Francisco. Tyson Ross going for the Padres. Um, no interest in Ross. Uh, you can pay down for Suarez, I guess. It's not the worst idea in the world, but there's I don't really see the need. He's just another low price guy that you're trying to differentiate with. Both of these guys are going to have no ownership. Um I just I won't be here for Suarez or Ross. I, I assume you won't either. No, um, not believing in the Tyson Ross resurgence or whatever he's been doing. He's been striking guys out his last couple starts. So <clears throat> uh, even though he got rocked in Coors, like he still had seven strikeouts in under four innings. I think yeah. um, this game I'm pretty much going to act like it doesn't exist. A terrible ballpark for hitting. Um, Maybe the worst in the entire MLB. Two bad pitchers. Ross has been a little bit better. And I usually like to play Giants bats against lefties because I want to play like McCutcheon and, and Posey, but not going to do it against a righty, even a righty that I think is as bad as Tyson Ross. Um, if you had to choose one hitter, who would it be? Because I, I chose one guy yesterday, um, and that's sort of how I talked about this game, but... I really hate this game. One hitter from this entire game? Yeah. Um, hmm. Brandon Crawford, maybe? Yeah, I mean... Uh, if I'm just going to pay down and get, like, a shortstop at the top of the order, you know, uh, maybe. I mean, I, I don't... Yeah, I, probably nobody. Margot, right. kind of, is okay at the top yes, mine of the Dodgers. Was Mine was Perella, just 3,100. He okay. hits lefties really hard. Um, just on DK, it, the, the pricing, I'm sure, is different on FanDuel. He's 2,800 um, on FanDuel. It's not yeah. so bad, but it's, he's got nice pricing on DraftKings. Yeah. Man, I I actually hate this game. These last two have been pretty bad, I think. So. Yeah. Uh, oh. th these are just two games I won't have any part of. Yeah. All righty. Well, let's hop over to the crunches, which I've already done. I've got DK up first. Pitching is 43% Waka, 42% Sale, 35% Scherzer, 30% Syndergaard. Everything else is coming in a little bit below there. So who are the two that we want to look at for DK? Sale and Syndergaard? Um, Syndergaard yeah, and see, see if you can get Yeah, Syndergaard and, and like Scherzer or Sale. We can get eight lineups with Sale, seven lineups with Scherzer. Who would you prefer to look at first? Oh, with, with Syndergaard already? Yeah. Um, just go to go to Sale. Okay. Just try that. So we'd be looking at uh, Brewers, Cardinals. Okay. Um, Twins, Mets. Twins, Red Sox, which I think is kind of nice. No, there's John Gray in there. Oh. I think oh, I unselected yeah. Syndergaard. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Syndergaard and Sale. So lots of Twins Mets seems to be the direction to go if you need Sale and Syndergaard. Or Nats Mets. Yeah. Okay. Or you can stack up those Giants. Yeah. Let's see how it looks without Sale. And with Scherzer. Should be pretty similar, right? Yeah, I would imagine. I think you'll just get more Nats to come along in the stack. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a lot of Nats and Mets. All right, what happens if you go to Waka and Syndergaard? I bet this looks phenomenal. I'm sure it does. 
Yeah, big time yeah. Cardinals Brewers stacks. So like all the best parts of those two stacks are there. Same for Cardinals and Twins. You can get all of those good parts. So you can get to something with both or with two of the bigger pitchers. Um, it might take a little bit extra work, but if you pay down a little bit, you could really open things up today. Yeah. So major stacks coming out of this. Nats, Brewers, Twins, uh, Cardinals. I don't see Angels anywhere yet. Let's see. Do we have a lot of Trout? 2%. Two. Man. They might be sold. No? Okay, so there's a, a Sale, Tropiano, Twins, and Angels stack. Which I actually kind of like. Yeah, I mean, what was it? Sale, Tropiano, and okay. Yeah, I like pretty much all those players. And you get uh, Mauer so instead play. of Pujol, so you can smile. Yeah, I, I don't have Mauer. That's my hot take for the day. <clears throat> we'll take a look at FanDuel quickly as well, just to give you an idea. These are my placeholders right now. <sighs> Come on, Fantasy Cruncher. You got this. You're not even crunching right now. We're literally just loading old junk. <laughs> you don't have to do any work. So Scherzer, Sale, and Waka are the three guys. Syndergaard coming out a little bit lower here. Um, I'm going to... I want to look and see what a lineup with Waka, like how much that opens up, and it's just crazy. I... I'm going to have so much Waka tonight, it's going to be bad. Ah, like it gets to an, Waka is so cheap that I can get to an Astro stack, and I don't ever really get to an Astro stack because of how expensive they are. So. Do you think Waka is uh, the upside? I mean, like, so one of these pitchers, or a few of these, these top guys are going to get, um, I, I don't know what it would be on FanDuel, like 65, 70 points, right? Uh, that's that's a really good game. Is so, it? Like, okay. Waka had 49 <clears throat> fantasy points in his last start. He went six innings, eight Ks, and a walk. Got the win. Okay. Um, so 60, 65-ish, maybe? 60 uh, is going to be probably outside of his wheelhouse. But if he can get to that, like, no, I'm saying for... high, like 45 or higher, you'll be happy. Yeah, no, I'm saying for, for like... Uh, you can you make that you up? Were with breaking the bats, up there. I, I mean, you can. I didn't hear what you said at the beginning. It broke up a little bit. Oh no, I, I was just saying you could. Could you make that up with the bats? The difference between him and the top scoring pitcher. I don't know. Um, I think because so. like, yeah, because like Sale and Scherzer or Syndergaard, I think one or two, maybe all of them, like could go nuts. And then if people have those cheap bats that go off, like. Even if Waka does really well, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be tough. So, like for perspective, Sale doesn't have a start over fifty fantasy points this year on Fanduel. Interesting. Um, he had forty, so he had like less because he didn't get the win. He had less fantasy points in his ten k start um, a couple nights ago than Waka did uh, in that last start. I'll look at Scherzer too to see what his high is. So Scherzer has been in like the mid fifties, got up to sixty seven. Sixty seven was the complete game, two mm. hitter, ten Ks against the Braves. So like that's about as high as it's gonna get in any individual game. If you're getting into the fifties, you had an amazing day, but mid forties and higher is sort of like the range you're looking for to be in the running for winning that GPP. Okay. Tonight yeah. it's gonna be a little bit different because like with so many pitchers on the board, even three percent ownership of like, let's say Harlan Garcia has, like, 50 fantasy points at 4% ownership. Like, that's going to naturally just be towards the top because of how many other bats will get there. Right. Um, but, yeah, like, uh, I think having Waka does not eliminate you from anything. He can certainly be in the mid-40s, which is all you really need at his price point. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Sounds good to me. Anything to plug tonight? <clears throat> Uh, two more hockey games tonight. Um, there should be two for the rest of the week. Um, assuming all these, well, all these series are going to go five, at least. 
Um, so we'll have Washington, Pittsburgh, Nashville, Winnipeg tonight. Should be really fun. Um, I'll be digging into that right now. And then I'll have the stacks and individual plays out, the spotlight plays this afternoon. Osmo will have his rankings out. Um, and we'll just keep plugging away, trying to make some money and watching some playoff hockey. Yeah, two basketball games tonight. Uh, Cavs, Raptors, and Pelicans, Warriors all have projections up. We'll have rankings out. Uh, look for Chris Bag switching hedge. Um, look for Osimo slam dunks. Probably going to come out as a tweet, so make sure you're following at Osimo underscore com to get those. Uh, I'll be playing a healthy amount of baseball. You're doing the live stream tonight, correct? I am on the live stream tonight. Yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow night for the live stream. Yeah. Um, what else do we got to touch on? Oh, uh, we're doing another Playline contest. So if you go to playline.com slash r slash awesomeo, uh, let me log in here and show you guys the contest quick. This will be on Friday. It's the awesomeo.com presents million dollar perfect line bonus, 5,000 guaranteed. 2K to first. Uh, it's the biggest tournament the Playline has run so far from a guaranteed perspective. Um, there's been overlay in the past, so I, I would highly recommend checking this out. If you sign up through us, you'll get a free $5. So, uh, in, in theory, your buy-in for this tournament could be free. Um, James Harden, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant are the three guys you need to pick their points, rebounds, and assists. We'll have an article out later on in the week uh, talking about um, sort of how to approach that. But check that out right now biggest tournament they've been running so far and uh you know you have a chance to compete against all of us so come check it out anything else you need to add <clears throat> no good luck on this slate choose your stud starting pitcher or pitchers wisely um it should be fun should be high scoring and uh yeah we'll see you on the live stream at six eastern yeah adios everybody best of luck tonight and we will talk to you again in the morning